Hi, my name is Karina Walter and welcome to the Standard Newsroom. I'm here with St. Catharines Mayor Walter Senzik for our monthly chat with the mayor. It's welcome. Good to be back. Good to be back here in April. Yes, we missed March, so uh, it's been a while since we've sat down and talked. It feels like March, though. Yeah, it's freezing. Yes. Uh, I like your jersey. Wearing it today, Thursday, in support of the Humboldt Broncos and the tragedy that occurred in Humboldt and the city of St. Catharines, the school boards, there's a lot of businesses that are participating in Jersey for Humboldt Day in Canada, and it's in our, way, our small way of showing support for the families, the friends uh, of those affected by that tragedy. And the city also had the flags at half staff this week as well for Yes, that. we've had them at ha half mast. And we're also funds raised today through Wear Your Jersey to Work Day is contributing actually to the, the GoFundMe for those who will have to, the families and the, the, those survivors who will have to deal with this for a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Um, you're right, a lot of people in the city are doing it today, and I noticed the fire department, yep. uh, the parks and rec at the city, there's law firms. Why do you think that this has caught on and that so many people want to it's be a part of it? It's, it's such a tragi tragic incident in which Canada's, uh, our hockey is, our, is the Canadian game, but it's also the, the age, the youth, the, the fact that we all have either experienced or know someone who plays sports and they do this as, as part of their upbringing, and it, it just strikes home whether you have basketball, volleyball, hockey, you name it, you're still part of a team sport, and a lot of kids travel, and as parents, you have that, that little touch of anxiety when your, your son or daughter goes and travels, and so this, this strikes at the heart of what a lot of parents feel when their kids are traveling, and uh, it's a, it's a, it was a sad day, and it is a sad time for our mm -hmm. country. Um, you've had a lot of long days the last few days of the city council meeting on Monday. Um, you had volunteer recognition night with the city, and you've got regional council tonight. Um, this is the first meeting that's happened since Grant LaFleche's story broke about the, um, the irregularities in the hiring of the CAO. You've said you were going to call for an investigation. Are you going to be doing that tonight? Yeah, I have a motion that has been, been forwarded for the agenda, and that the motion calls for an independent investigation outside of the chair's office or the CAO's office. And quite frankly, it shouldn't have any touch points into the corporation itself, and it should report directly to regional council. And that's important because the incident did, or did allegedly occur in the, the chair's office and the connection to the, the current CAO. So you just want to make sure that whatever process we use, that there, it's as, it's as um, how do you want to say it, authentic as possible so that there is no opportunities for people to question the final decision. So we're hoping for an independent investigator. I think we're going to have to settle on, settle in on whether it's the ombudsman or it's, a, it's another type of investigation firm. But we'll want to have that report come directly to council with no influence of, of anyone outside of the investigator being able to conduct his or her job. What are some of the questions that you're hoping the investigator can answer? Well, really, it's, it's, we've got to focus on the process of the hiring of the CAO. So from the formation of the hiring committee through to the, the selection of the CAO, really looking at the knowledge exchange, the exchange of information, who was it getting access to what, who had access to what, and why were those access points allowed. And really, that's the fundamental part of it. it the, the, the fact that Grant LaFleche has, has, has written and uncovered a... a a transgression, a potential transgression, we want to make sure that we understand fully what happened as a council because this does have a direct impact on the leadership of the region. And so we want to make sure that the information coming back to us will give us confidence that if there was a transgression, we're handling it in the right way. And if there wasn't a transgression, we want to know why it's not considered to be so. so you know, there's some steps to have to take, and I, I get it. There's a lot of folks out there who would like to act quickly and swiftly, but this is a corporation, and we've got to make sure that we follow due process so that whatever result is at the end, we can back everything up. Do you think there's going to be support on council for that tonight, or is there going to be a long debate? I, well, I hope it's not a long debate. I would be surprised if it's not unanimous. Like I, 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 would, I would be very surprised if, if anyone stands up and says that we don't need to undertake this. That would be, 
if, if anyone does, then they don't really know what it means to be in that position, and they don't know what it means to be in a, in a corporate structure where, as members of the board, which we are as a council, have a very important role in playing, in, a role to play in terms of maintaining the integrity of, of the overall operations of, of the region or the city or of anything else. You think the region's reputation is at stake yes. here? Yeah. And it's, it's at stake because it, you know, if you're looking in from the outside and you're seeing that knowledge is being exchanged during what should be a confidential period, that would not give me confidence if I was someone who wanted to do business with the region. That would not give me confidence if I wanted to come in and apply for a, 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 a senior position at the region. That it wouldn't give me confidence if I was looking at the, the region as a place to invest. None of that would give me confidence. So that's why we have to do this in a way that ensures that there's an integrity in the process and that whatever result comes out of it uh, will allow us as council to stand behind that process. I normally leave our reader questions to the end, but this one relates to that, so I'll, I'll get to it first. This one came over Twitter from a Mike Gretzinger uh, for our Ask Sensit questions. He says, with all of the controversy surrounding the present Niagara Region Council, how will you reaffirm public confidence? Do you feel we need a regional council? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> big question. Uh, the, the region is here, and it's, it is a, a very large entity, and it's, it's, a, it's a very complex complex corporation, so it's here to stay. I don't, I don't foresee the, the province ever getting rid of the region. That being said, it's important for us to focus on how we can better ensure that the way we're, as a region, the way we're viewed and the decisions that we're making are, are of the highest regard. And so it's, it's frustrating from my perspective because we have a lot of good people who work at the region. There's a lot of good work being done. We have public health, we have public works, we have, uh, you, you name it, you know, we're, we're, we look after the water, wastewater in terms of this, the sewage plants. Like there's, there's people doing great work and it's just, there's a cloud of, of, of darkness over top of it. And our job is to get back to uh, business, the business that impacts the, the rate payers, the business that impacts those in our community and make sure that we're, we as a council are helping to direct from a strategic perspective where the region's going in. You know, we've had some good wins, uh, but they're very much getting clouded by a lot of the politicking that's happening. So do you think when he's asking about reaffirming the public confidence that having an investigation would help with that? Oh, for sure, or? for sure. That's, and that's, that's, that's step number one. And then beyond that is we, we gotta review our processes to make sure this stuff doesn't happen. And I, you know, we just went through a CAO search for the city of St. Catharines and nothing like this would happen because we've got systems in place that prevent it from being influenced by individuals that, may, that shouldn't even be a part of the process. So you're just making sure that we're all the way along following the right process. I guess this isn't hard stuff. This, this is corporate governance 101. So is that about having like HR people? Involved in the process? HR people involved, HR people who know what they're doing and making sure that they're follow, we're following a process. Like it's, this is governance 101. It, this, this isn't complex stuff. And the frustration is that we should be dealing with the complex issues in, in our community. The opioids, the, the opioid epidemic, the, the, house, the, the, the housing issues that we're facing, the poverty issues, the child poverty, you know, trying to att attract and retain businesses. Those are the complex things that we should be dealing with. This stuff, gets in the way a lot of that. So, got our work cut out for us. And this is the kind of stuff that other councillors who weren't part of the committee, did you, you didn't really know what was happening as t in terms of the HR department not being involved? In no, it was, it, those are the things, the hiring, there was a hiring committee that was selected by council. It's a 31 member council, you can't hire by 31. So the hiring committee was there. They followed a process and the night that we got to be a part of the, the final selection or we were informed of what the final selection was. Um, the hiring committee is the one that we have to instill our trust. Uh, will I personally you know, review whether or not that is the best process moving forward in terms of how it was struck and, and, and the process that they followed? Hopefully that'll come out of the investigation as well. I wanted to ask you about a big um, St. Catharines meeting that's coming up next week. It's on the rental housing bylaw uh, that the city wants to bring in, which would require properties with four or, uh, four or less, less units, units to get a license. And yeah. this was something that was brought up to kind of try and curb 
student problems? Well, it's not really student problems, and I, 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 that's the one issue that, that we, we want to we wanna stay away from is that we are a university town, but we, are, we don't currently have a, a program in place that creates the, the database for us to understand where our rental units are. And it's also a safety issue where we want to be able to build a database through this licensing program so that when the fire department shows up on scene and it's a, it looks to be a family home, but it's been split into two units, basement and, and above, and they need to know that that information is available to them, that they can call it up on their computer as they're going to a fire so that they know, do they have to get into the, is there someone potentially living in the basement? This is a lot of information that they don't have right now. So it's a safety issue. It's a ensuring that, that the landlords who are, who are retrofitting homes are doing so and they're following the bylaws of the city. They're getting permits for plumbing. They're getting permits for the kitchens. They're getting, so there's a permit process. And this creates a safe environment for those who are renting. And it creates an opportunity for the city to understand where the rental market is. And so, we want to get feedback from those who would be impacted, the landlords, the tenants, and the neighbors. A lot of neighborhoods have rental units in there. So we want to build the best residential licensing bylaw that protects our citizens and also creates the opportunity for those who are in the rental market to make sure that their, their units are, are safe and up to code. So it's a, it's a long time overdue and we just want to make sure we get it right, so we need to hear from the public. And when this was brought up at City Council, it was mentioned that the City of Oshawa has this bylaw, or a very similar bylaw, and it's been tested all the way to the Always Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. A lot of folks are saying, oh, you know, we can, we can challenge this. It's like, well, Oshawa spent a lot of money, and ours is pretty much modeled right after the Oshawa model. So whoever thinks that they can challenge it up to the Supreme Court won't even get a hearing there because it's already been heard and decided upon. So we just want to get it right for St. Catharines, and hopefully from next week's public meeting, we'll be able to you know, re, uh, refine it a bit more. I have heard from a couple of tenants who emailed and said that they were worried that this might increase their rent prices and actually heard from a landlord who said he would have to increase rent prices as well. Is that something that the city has considered? I think that's what we're hearing from uh, folks. And so we want to understand uh, how, how that will uh, materialize in terms of is it the cost of the license? Is there a way that we can better manage the cost of the license so that it doesn't create a cascading effect? You know, one thing you got to understand is having a, a rental unit in, in, in our community is like running a small business. So there's folks who have five or six rental units. You're making a good income coming in, and it's also you're running it as a business. We have a number of small businesses that have to get a business license to operate. So this is another way of licensing a small business in our community, but we want to make sure that we get it right and we're respectful for those who are in the rental business and as well as make respectful for the tenants so that it's not an undue burden that's passed on to them from their landlord. Okay, so that public meeting for anybody who's interested in going is at, on Tuesday at 6 p.m. and it's actually at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre. Yep. The second big public meeting there, I think, at least. It, it, well, maybe even the third. We had the Rankin uh, Port Luzi project there as well, so that'll be the third. Right, yeah. okay. It's a good venue. It is. It's a nice venue to walk into, uh, a little bit different from City Hall. Um, not that there's anything wrong with City Hall. No. Got some questions from readers. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, Got another question from a reader from Twitter, um, Robert DeWolf, and he said, as the mayor of this beautiful city, which of the following would be your priority? One, low-cost housing with private partners, or two, go train, which has not been proven to be that cost-effective or efficient. I would say, and I, I, I know, you know, thanks for the question, Bob, uh, I would say that it's both, and go, it's both for two reasons. One is low-cost housing, and partnerships, making sure that we have a, a healthy stock of affordable housing in our community is absolute priority. And we're getting more and more pressures in our community for people to be able to afford to live in St. Catharines. And so we got to make sure that we're building affordable units. We're landlocked. We don't have a lot of space. So that means we got to vertically grow as well. So there is a lot of discussion in our community about vertical growth. I got to say to a lot of people, get used to seeing more vertical growth. It's going to happen. And we got to make sure that it's affordable. So. Bob's correct on that priority. 
As to GO coming to our community, it's still priority number one. We've got it. We've got the commitment from the provincial government. They're not going to turn back on this commitment. And we've got to make sure that we're GO ready because even today, Karina, gas is a buck thirty. Mm. If gas goes up to a point where a lot of folks can't afford to drive, how are they going to get around not just our community but get back and forth to other economic markets like Hamilton or the GTA? They're going to need to be on a, on a public transit system and having GO come into our community provides that, 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 that public transit system that will plug into other economic areas. So there's a cost-benefit analysis, and GO has proven that when it comes to a community, it does help grow the economy in the community as well. So both of those are going to be priorities. Okay. And I think the question about the, lo the low-cost housing um, leads into the next question we had from a reader, which was an email from Memi Rami. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Um, she talks about the price of housing and the fact that um, the city used to be approachable for the average family with an average income, and she can no longer afford to live here. She says rental prices have skyrocketed in response to a new mar housing market heat, and uh, her, home, her hopes for home ownership have died off. Uh, she's asking what you would do to keep young families from leaving due to insane housing prices here. Well, again, it's, it's about supply and demand, and we are a landlocked community, and a lot of folks are facing the same problems where they can't find affordable homes, affordable starter homes to be able to move into as young people and then move into more expensive homes as you move through your career. Uh, those are being more of a challenge, and how do we address that? We can't grow this way because we're landlocked, but we can grow vertically and have more apartments, and we've got some great announcements coming up about uh, apartment units that will be added to our complement. We're looking at our vacancy rate, for our, which is under 2% under right now for vacancy. So we're not allowing, we won't be allowing condo conversions that want to convert into from apartments into condos. And that's because we're well below. We want to make sure that we have a healthy stock of apartments, that we have a healthy stock of new, what I would call mid to high rise building com coming into the marketplace. And that will pull people to live in those units as well. And that'll free up hopefully more housing stock. Will it lower the price? I think we've been undervalued for a long time in St. Catharines. And because of the, the traffic coming into our community from the GTA, it's now pushed up a lot of the housing prices to probably where they should be today. The, the concern that I have is that now you start to get that artificial inflation rate on mm -hmm. housing. And that's where it pushes even more people out of the market. So. We're trying to get it right. You can't build housing stock overnight, uh, but we're trying to get it right. And those are concerns that I'm hearing on a, on a more regular basis that St. Catharines is becoming a bit of out of reach for a lot of folks. And that doesn't, that doesn't make for um, what I would call to be a, a, a very, very dynamic, diverse community. So that's going to be our priority in the next couple of years as well. When you're talking about vertical housing, there is a lot of anxiety about that in neighborhoods, existing neighborhoods with uh, single family homes. And we heard from some people from Scott Street on, on Monday night at City Council um, opposing two high rise buildings in their area. How does City Council balance that, the need for housing, but also, you know, people who are in existing homes and maybe don't want to see a high rise right. in their neighborhood? Definitely a delicate balance. And you, we've got an official plan, which for, for folks at home, it's official plan is our guiding, is our planning guiding tool. And it identifies areas in the community where you have residential, you have low-rise, low, uh, low rise, and then you have what would be uh, high-rise in, intense uh, intensification for density. They're already mapped out, and that mapping took place over a number of years. And so when a, a project comes in and, and it fits within that official plan, we have to really consider that because over the iteration or over the development of this plan, this area has been, has been identified as, as high density. That may include being a part of maybe someone's backyard. And that's a fine balancing act. And so it's not going to be easy. Uh, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of people coming forward and, and talking about why they don't want to see it or why they don't want it in their neighborhood. And as a council, we have to look at what is in the best interest of the neighborhood, or what is in the best interest of, of the city, and what is in the best, na best interest of our future. Because we can e quickly become a community that not a lot of people can afford to live in if we don't help grow the diversity of, of, um, 
of 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 apartments and, and living space. So it's it's a it's a it's a delicate balancing act, um, but it's it's something that we've been elected to do, and it's something when you know people come forward and they'll talk about democracy and they'll say, you know, we're here in front of you. You have to listen to us because we elected you. We were elected by the people of St. Catharines, and this is a very very important point. We were elected to make decisions based on the information that we have in front of us and based on staff's best recommendation. And then we have to consider everything. It's, it's, that is what democracy stands for, is making sure that those who are elected are doing what's best for the community, not just today, but for the next 50, 60 years. Because that's where we're planning for. And it's not just about the impact today, but what will this, what will this building have an impact on our community for the next 50 years? Um, so these are tough decisions. Mm -hmm. These are these are ones that you, I, I'll be honest to a lot of the folks who are who are following along. These aren't easy dis decisions. We don't sit there and just say yes or no. It's based on a lot of understanding, and I can understand the frustration that people are having. Mm. That just leads so well into the last question about the municipal election coming up in October. Um, you've got candidate information sessions coming up next week. Um, they're not being held in St. Catharines. They're being held at the Gale Center in Niagara Falls on uh, Thursday, April the 19th, information fair at 6, information session at 7. have a Facebook question from a Mel Debbie Mellon asking if you are planning on running for regional chair. Uh, no. Okay. I, that, that's, that, that'll be, it's, it's, yeah, this is, this is on record. <laughs> so, no, there's, there's no interest. I think the city is in a, in a, in a, very, a very unique position today and being a part of that and its future is, is something that I'm committed to and I know a number of councillors are committed to that and we're, we're doing great things in the city of St. Catherine. So I think just keeping my focus where it is today. Okay. Wearing my, that's why I'm wearing my favorite color. Green and blue, green, blue and white. City's colors. City, city and color. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in and being put on the spot like that. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I appreciate you having me and I'm looking forward to, uh, what is it? April snow brings May what? Flowers. <laughs> Hopefully. It doesn't rhyme. No, it doesn't go at all. So you're not participating in the mayor's poetry challenge? I think I already did with the brief that I wrote, which was in a rhyming form <laughs> yes, it was. about it. But, uh, I'll no, I'll that leave it to the submission. experts. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Mayor Sensic will be here again next month, we hope, in May. And you can send me questions right now for next, next uh, month, and I will keep them on hand. On hand. Uh, you can tweet them with the hashtag AskSensic, or you can email me at my new address, karina.walter at niagaradailies.com. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me.